Nicholas Winding Refn's Ode to the Gritty Side of Los Angeles. Staying true to that tribute, the 2011 movie starring Ryan Gosling shot entirely in and around the City of Angels. The movie was launched when Refn was driving around LA with Gosling and heard a pop song on the radio. Refn began to tear up as the aesthetic of the film suddenly clicked in his mind. Without that fateful car ride, we wouldn't have drive. There's something inside you It's hard to explain Anything happens in that five minutes and I'm yours, no matter what. Anything a minute either side of that and you're on your own. I don't sit in while you're running it down. I don't carry a gun. I drive. It's hard to Let's start our locations off with MacArthur Park, site of the spot where Standard and the driver meet up to discuss that one last robbery. MacArthur Park sits in the Los Angeles neighborhood of Westlake, just shy of downtown. Originally dating back to the 19th century, it was renamed after the famed World War II general Douglas MacArthur. Appropriate to the film, this park has a history of violence, having become infamous in the mid-80s as prime gang territory. It recently began revitalization with new playgrounds and a concert pavilion being created. On Parkview Street, on the edge of MacArthur Park, sits the apartment building home to the driver and the film's famous elevator fight. This building was formerly known as the Park Plaza Hotel, but now calls itself the MacArthur. The building is currently vacant, mainly used as rental space for movie shoots and special events. However, the city of Los Angeles thought the historical example of Art Deco was important enough to warrant the status of City of Los Angeles Cultural Affairs Department Historical Cultural Monument. It's here where the driver and Irene live and interact. You may notice that Irene and the driver barely talk to each other throughout the film, despite how much their characters go through together. This was primarily because Ryan Gosling and Carey Mulligan felt that their scenes would be more focused on the mood and refused to say many of the scripted lines. In fact, Gosling only speaks 116 lines total throughout the course of the film. Next we come to Nino's Pizza, the restaurant Ron Perlman's character uses as his office. The restaurant standing in for Nino's is Vincenzo's Pizza on Balboa Boulevard in Granada Hills. When talking about why he chose this location for the film, Refn said, It was difficult to find because I wanted a real New York kind of pizza shop, where you walk in off the street to get a slice, but also a place that basically looks like a front for something else. Most of the places in LA were more restaurant oriented where being a New Yorker, you're just used to walking in and getting a slice. I wanted that feel more, because Nino is a Jewish man who wants to be an Italian gangster. That's why Bernie Rose calls him Izzy. That's his real name. After shooting was complete, the restaurant kept the fake menu for Nino's up on their wall as a tribute to the film.
In one of the lighter moments of the film, we see the driver taking Irene and her son for a ride along the LA River. The river was originally the main source of fresh water for LA, but after a devastating flood in 1938, it was decided that the river needed to be controlled. The Army Corps of Engineers began an ambitious project of completely encasing the river's bed and banks in concrete, with only a trickle of water usually flowing down the middle. It would be tough to drive the river like you see in the film, as it's actually gated off and is inaccessible to the public. Another key spot for the driver and Irene is the Big Six Market in Westlake. This is where he sees her and her son Benicio going shopping. Her car stalls in the market's parking lot and he gives them a ride home. The market where this scene was filmed is a real local market, the Big Six, located just a few blocks from the driver's apartment. There's not really much to say about this place since it's a standard market, although it's become a destination spot for fans of the film. Most of the online reviews for the store actually reference the movie. is actually a picture car warehouse. It was the first location chosen for the movie by Refn himself. Of the location, he said, it really came by chance. I was out there looking at some of the picture cars that we would use in the movie, and I just love this location. This is where we were shooting the mechanics. This is going to be Shannon's place, I said. And there was just one rule to the production team, do not move a single thing. It was completely leave it as it is. The only thing I did was have the production designer paint the wall blue instead of green because it stood out more in contrast. I'm colorblind, so everything has to be contrasted for me to see. This spot is located behind a closed down resale center in Northridge, California. Let's jump back to the start of the film and go to the Staples Center, the closing location for the film's first robbery sequence. The driver skillfully navigates the busy streets of LA at night to arrive at this location, leaving behind the police cars and helicopters. He uses a basketball game and the exiting crowd to blend in with the people around him. At a cost of $375 million, the Staples Center was built in 1991 and is the current home for the LA Lakers, the Clippers, and the Kings.
The driver shows off his skills behind the wheel at the Saugus Speedway outside of Santa Clarita. This former circle track is now home to a regular swap meet, among other events. The track started out as a rodeo area in 1927 before it was sold off during the Great Depression. It became a racetrack in 1939 and functioned as one until 1995, hosting events for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. It's here where the driver first meets Bernie, played by Albert Brooks. My hands are a little dirty. So am I. Brooks won this role after he met Nicholas Winding Refn in character, pinning him against the wall and speaking in a threatening manner. Brooks also shaved his eyebrows for the role to make his character seem more emotionless. When the driver tries to help Irene's husband, Standard, get out of debt, he agrees to drive the getaway car for the pawn shop robbery. The pawn shop is actually an Elks Lodge off the Sierra Highway in Santa Clarita. Since Refn and his crew had to shoot in the valley area where the production hub was, the lodge was a perfect location for filming. He said, it had to be on the outskirts of the city. I wanted that kind of hillside, blue sky, almost like a western feel, not an urban environment. After the robbery goes wrong, the driver and Blanche hide out in a motel. This location is the Pink Motel in Sun Valley. The motel and attached diner are currently out of use and are privately owned by one of the studios in town. It's rented out for production only. Refn chose this spot because of its 1960s vibe, but refrained from showing the exterior as the hotel has been popular in many TV shows and movies. And lastly, we come to the spot of the final confrontation between Bernie and the driver. This was filmed at the Great Wall restaurant in the valley. Refn said of the spot, I wanted a New York style Chinese restaurant, which is hard to find in LA, especially in this area. But I was lucky. I liked the red velvet walls, the authentic Chinese artifacts. Once I saw it, I was like, this is it, we're shooting here. It was completely functional. We had lunch here. It was very greasy, so you knew you were in China.
After their negotiations for the money and Irene's future, the driver and Bernie stab each other in the parking lot behind the restaurant. Thankfully, the driver lives to fight another day and drives off to who knows where to close out the movie. And with that, that'll do it for this episode of Where It Was Made. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the movies.